Hi guys, what's one way that you know that God's ear is tuned to your prayer and that he does not turn his face from you? We'll discuss this topic in greater detail on this episode of Tamika's Nuggets as we dig into guarding your tongue. This is such vital information that every person needs to hear. So I want you to make sure that you stay tuned. Christian, it is important to us to make sure that we're pleasing God, our Heavenly Father, that we're walking in love with one another, that we're operating in faith because that's a key principle to the kingdom of God. So we want to make sure that God is pleased with the things that we're saying, the things that we're doing, the decisions we're making, pleased that our love walk. And so one of the things that's very crucial is what we're saying, guarding our tongue. So we're going to talk about this topic today in greater detail. And for scriptural reference, we're going to review the scripture in Psalms chapter 34, verses 13 and 14. And I want to read these verses in the message translation. And it reads, Guard your tongue from profanity and no more lying through your teeth. Verse 14, turn your back to sin, do something good, embrace peace, don't let it get away. I love this scripture. This is an awesome scripture and it's very relevant to this day and age and to every Christian in their walk with God. And because we are in a love walk with God, we deal with people each and every day in our household, at work, in ministry, wherever we go, we run into people and we deal with people and our love walk is so important. We know that God is love. God teaches us how to love. He first loved us and he shows us how to love one another. And one way that we can execute this is be conscious of what's coming out of our mouth. So what this scripture means to me in verse 13, where it talks about guarding your tongue from profanity. Profanity, at first thought, you're going to think of using foul language or using what some call curse words. Um, I first thought about the word profane. And as I thought about the word profane, uh, profane, I looked it up in the dictionary and it, it means anything that is not sacred or biblical. So... When I saw that, I said, well, basically something profane is something that doesn't represent God and it doesn't represent the word of God. Now, this is to me as I'm thinking this through and meditating on this and rolling this over in my mind and contemplating uh, profanity. So as I thought about profane things, you know, I kind of made a list of things that, you know, would strike me where it says, guard your tongue from profanity, anything profane coming out of my mouth. And some of these examples that I came up with was talking negative about somebody else or backbiting, as some people would say, um, that definitely is not biblical and that doesn't represent God because you're tearing down somebody else and you're keeping up strife and negative energy. You're putting that in the atmosphere and you're transferring that energy or at least attempting to transfer that energy and what you feel and what you're saying onto 
the person that you're talking to to get them on board with what you're saying about this individual over here. That definitely doesn't represent a love walk and God is definitely not pleased with that. I also thought about uh, gossiping and negativity, which can kind of be coupled with backbiting. Um, gossiping and, and keeping up negative energy instead of saying positive things. We as Christians, you know, we're faith-filled people. Anything that is not of faith, it does not please God and it's a sin. We see the cup half full. We don't see the cup half empty. So if there's a situation going on, what's important for the Christian to do is see the cup half full and offer solutions to anything that's uh, not going well, whether you're in the workplace. We'll take that as an example. If something is not going well in the workplace, devise solutions to the problem. How can you fix it? What can you do different? What can you implement? What can you bring to the table to help change the situation for the better instead of putting negative energy out in the atmosphere and getting other people to jump in the boat with you to tear down either leadership or tear down the company name or reputation? You know, that... That is not what you should do. You should definitely be a solution to the problem. That's what your focus should be. And, and definitely show the love of God to management and not backbite and, and you know be negative and down management for their leadership skills or lack thereof. You know, encourage and and help make the situation better be a part of the solution and not a part of the problem in the workplace also talking down to others making them feel less than and belittling others you may be in the workplace in a leadership role or a management role and talking down to others as as though they're beneath you and not on your level, even as a leader, you're there to serve the people. Leadership is about service to others. You're there to serve them, to make sure their needs are met, to make sure all the needs are met for the customers that you have, the clients or patients that you're serving. You're there to serve them, make sure that everything goes smoothly, you know, make sure there's peace in the workplace, make sure, you know, that it's an atmosphere of joy and happiness and peace and a place that people want to come back to, whether it's the employees or whether it's the customers or clients, it's a, that it's a place that's welcoming. And so to talk down to staff or customers or other people that you feel is not on your level, that's not exhibiting the love of Christ. It's not. So as you choose your words wisely, choose how your words come across uh, to the next person. That will be very key in your love walk as a Christian. Um, I also thought about pride, the things you're saying to present yourself higher than you ought. The word says, think of ourselves highly, but not more high than we ought. And that's talking about pride, you know, thinking of yourself above everybody else or that you've done everything on your own with no help. Or, or no regard for anybody else input or or what anybody else contributed or brought to the table you're taking credit for everything it was all you nobody could have done anything without you you know um that you know you're self righteous and it's it's all about what you did you you got blessed because of what you did you know um how many times you prayed a day or your fast or 
you know, this person over here got blessed because you said a prayer for them or, you know, it was all you're doing. And I mean, the list goes on and on. You know, pride comes in many different forms. Pride is that that can just sneak in very sly. And before you know it, you know, you've said something or acted a certain way or you know, did something that exhibited pride. And, you know, that's not that's that's not the Christian way because God is not pleased with people that operate in pride. God gives grace to the humble and he resists the pride, the prideful. So God will resist you if you're walking in pride. He wants no part of it. He wants nothing to do with you if you're walking in pride. God loves the humble heart. And that's what he, that's what he turns his face towards. Those are the people that he wants to hear the prayers of. His ear is tuned to the prayers of the humble. And those that are walking in love and walking in the ways of righteousness. Um, also speaking against God. You know, you're you're talking negative about God. You may have experienced, and a lot of people experience this, you know, they feel as though they have unanswered prayer because um, their prayer has not been answered soon enough, or they're mad at God because something happened to a loved one or a situation happened that they don't understand why it happened, and it's hurtful to them. Um, people feel betrayed by God or um, left out by God, you know, that God has forgotten them. God is not mindful of them. And, you know, they'll begin to speak negative against God and, you know, be angry with God and, you know, in some cases curse God. Um, so what are you saying with your mouth in regards to uh, the word of God, you know, your life uh, receiving from God and, you know, just overall about God and how things are working in your life, you know. So we do have to be mindful of what we're saying because God really is the only one that can help you out of a situation and help you through a situation. And, you know, though we don't always understand everything, we should not, as individuals, blame God, get angry with God, and, you know, say negative things to other people about God and turn people's hearts against God. So um, you will be accountable for the things that you say. Your word produces life. The words that you say produce life, just like um, in Genesis, where God, uh, it talks about God creating. God said, let there be, and it was. Words have life. The things that you're saying, they take root and they have life and they produce. You're either going to produce good and something that you want, or you're going to produce something negative and evil and something that you don't want. So there are consequences and there are fruits that do harvest as a result of the things that we are saying. And besides that, we want God to be pleased with the things that we're saying and the things that we're doing in our lives. So this is this is why I say it's so crucial for every person to really, really understand this. This is a very important topic that you you really need to hone in on and make sure that you're thinking about what you're saying each and every day. Um, another thing I thought about when I thought about profanity is judging, judging other people. Um, we should not judge others. The word says judge not unless ye be judged. And I don't think that we want to be judged. Uh, we really don't want to be judged for our actions because no one person is perfect. We all have faults and we all have fallen short 
and and falling short of the word of God and uh, what the expectation of God. So to sit back and judge someone else on their actions and what they've done, you know, God says, look at you, judge you, look at your actions, change your actions, look at what you're doing. It's enough <laughs> for you to focus on you internally than to try to go out and focus on somebody else. You don't even have time. You don't have enough time to focus on somebody else's shortcomings and to judge them and to backbite them and to slander their name and their reputation and pull them down. And mm -mm, you don't have time for that. It, you got all your time, you, all the time that you have, you need to be focusing on self focusing on what you're doing and trying to make self better because we always can find something to work on with ourselves. If we look deep enough and look hard enough and get God involved, God help me, help me to look at myself, look at my faults, purge myself of anything that does not represent you or your word and I want you to be pleased with me, God. So help me, guide me, direct me, show me where my faults are and where I can make correction in my life. Um, and then the obvious that we talked about is actually profane language, you know, speaking words that are unrepresentative of God and who God is. It just doesn't represent who we are as Christians because the God on the inside of us, the spirit of God on the inside of us um, represents something that's pure, something that's holy, something that's clean and good um, instead of something that's evil and um, harsh and ugly. That doesn't represent God. That represents the devil. And so we represent our father. You know, our father is not the devil. We don't walk around this earth representing him with our actions and our words and the things we're saying. We represent our father in heaven. We represent God and everything that's holy and pure and just and right. So uh, those are the type of things that we should be speaking and um, we should ab abstain from profanity and things that are profane and ungodly and unbiblical. Um, so that's the first part of the scriptural reference. And it also says, and no more lying through your teeth. And I don't think you can get any more clearer <laughs> than that part of the scripture. Um, we all know what lying is. Lying is saying something that is not true. Now, people try to say that, um, you know, if I don't really lie, but if you're making some, if you're deceiving somebody, you're not really verbally telling a lie, but you're deceiving the person. You're just barely touching a lie. You haven't even really said a lie, but in what you are saying, you're misleading the person person and um you're deceiving them intentionally you're you're deceiving them and trying to be sly about it by not physically saying a lie that is still a lie <laughs> there's no way around that you cannot slick your way through that and you know try to say no I didn't lie because I did I told the truth no you intentionally deceive somebody and cause them to think something that was not true. You're deceiving them. Deception is a form of lying. So um, be mindful of that and the truth will find you out. And so while you think that you're, you know, uh, getting away with something, the truth will find you out. So um, the truth has a way of coming back around. So don't think that you're getting away. You know, that's one reason that, you know, you should not lie. You should tell the truth because it's not like you're getting away with it. You may temporarily get away with it at the first part of it. But, you know, 
It'll make its way around. So really, in essence, you're not getting away with it. And besides that, God sees all and knows all. He knows what you've said. He knows what you're doing. So he sees that you have told a lie. So you can't get away from God. God sees all. He knows all. He's everywhere at the same time. He knows what's going on. So you're not getting away with that. And so um, what some people don't realize when they tell lies is how it makes other people feel. The other person that you've lied to, now they feel like they cannot trust you. The trust is broken. So now every time they're dealing with you, they feel like they have to put checks and balances in place and monitor you to make sure you're telling the truth because they don't know if you're lying or not because your history, you haven't been upfront and been truthful. So what type of relationship is that? That's not a relationship to have to where the other person cannot trust you. And then on the other side, you have not trusted the person you are in relationship and the person you're dealing with because if you trusted them, you could come to them with the truth. And the fact that you've hidden things and lied about it shows that you don't trust the person that you're dealing with. So this relationship is not built on a foundation of trust. The trust is broken. There is no trust on either side. So what type of relationship have you built? That's not a whole relationship. And that's definitely not what you want. Um, telling lies also shows that you have no value for the person that you're in relationship with. Being honest and truthful shows respect for the person that you're dealing with. And when you lie and cheat and don't tell the truth, then you have no value for that person. You don't care about them because if you cared about them, you would be honest and truthful and you would not make up stories. There is really no reason to lie. There is no reason to lie. Tell the truth. The word says the truth shall make you free. Don't you want to be free? Aren't you tired of, if you're a person that lies for no reason and you continue to lie all the time, aren't you tired of that? Nobody can trust you. You don't have no peace. You're always trying to keep up with the lie because once you tell the lie, you got to remember, <laughs> try to remember the lie that you told so that you don't mess it up in the future and say something outside of what you previously said. And you got to try to remember this lie and this lie and try to keep up with it. Isn't that exhausting? I just got exhausted <laughs> trying to talk about that little whirlwind of all these lies. It's exhausting. It's exhausting to try to keep up with it all. If you tell the truth all the time, you don't have to be thinking about all of that. You don't even have to try to remember what you said before because you're always telling the truth and you're just speaking, you know, what comes naturally. So it just shows that you don't care for the person you're dealing with when you're lying to them. That's not, that's not trust and that's not love. And it also shows that you're hiding stuff. You're being secretive about something. For some reason, you can't share it. You got to keep it bottled up um, from the other person that you're dealing with because you don't want them to know for some reason. You can't trust them with the information and uh, you're keeping secrets. And you should be, especially if it's a, a close personal relationship, you should, a best friend or a good friend, you should be able to trust. You should not have to hide things and be secretive and sneaking around and, you know, doing those things. That doesn't represent God. That doesn't represent peace. It doesn't represent love. It doesn't work, represent valor, a truth, integrity, all of these things. That doesn't represent any of that. 
And that's exactly what we want to represent because we represent God. And that's what God is to us. Um, also, it just shows that you don't value God because the word constantly talks about, um, you know, bearing false witness or, you know, the lying tongue and all of that. It talks about honesty and truth. And, you know, the truth shall make you free. So, you know, in the word of God, we can clearly see that God wants us to be truthful. So this is key to God and it pleases God when we're honest and, you know, we can be trusted by people we're in relationship with. We uh, have integrity. We trust each other. We love each other. We are open and honest with one another in our dealings. Um, you know, and we're on one accord with one another. You know, we we have a solid foundation that we're building on. The foundation is love, mutual respect, honesty, and we're building our relationship on that. When you break that, you just tear down the foundation and you can't build on a broken foundation. You can't do that. And so, you know, this is um, what this scripture is meaning to me. It's, it's, it's very crucial and very important to us as Christians. Uh, verse number 14 says, turn your back to sin. All of these things, backbiting, slander, gossiping, you know, all of these things, lying, you know, this is sin. All of this is sin in the eyes of God. So these are definitely things that we want to turn away from. And the scripture says, do something good. It's good to be truthful. It's good to lift people up, encourage people, support people, offer solutions to help when help is needed. These are good things that we should be about as we are in this love walk with fellow um, men and women as we walk day to day in our life situations. This is what we are to be about. The scripture says in verse 14, embrace peace and don't let it get away. Embrace peace and don't let it get away. There is no peace in backbiting, talking about somebody behind their back, gossiping about uh, things that happen in the office, tearing people down on um, social media, in the comment section, um, what they call it, throwing shade or, you know, um, tearing somebody down. You know, that is not, you know, now they call it trolling, trolling somebody, being a troll on social media. You know, that's not, that's not the way of God and God is not pleased with that. So, um, this is a very good scripture. I absolutely love this scripture. And I know that I say that all the time. There are so many scriptures that I do love. The word of God is just good. It is just good. It says, taste and see that the, the Lord is good. And, you know, the word, <laughs> it represents God. It represents the Lord, you know. So it is just so good to get in that word, meditate on it, think about it, look up words, see what they mean so you get a clear understanding of the word and just, you know, just taste and see that it's good. It just really is good. This scripture really blessed my soul. It's convicting. It convicts me as a person because I'm not perfect. You know, um, I have been guilty of some of these things on this list and it's convicting. And, uh, you know, if you find yourself in this situation, just repent, you know, just talk to God about it and say, God, I realize I have been, you know, party to some of these things and I want to change my ways. God, I apologize. And I just come before you and I just, you know, spill it out in front of you what I've done. And I just thank you, God, that you've already forgiven me. You have placed my sin in the sea to remember it no more. And you placed it from the as far as the east is from the west, you you don't even remember my sin anymore. And I'm grateful and I'm thankful that you have forgiven me and sent your son Jesus to die for my sin. And I just ask that you give me the strength, the courage, and you help me to change. So I want to pray with you as you take this walk in considering your tongue. 
and making sure that you're not walking in profanity and you're not walking in a lying tongue and causing God to turn his face from you, you know, because, you know, that's not the will of God that he wants and he's not pleased with that. And that you're, you know, making sure that God is ready and willing and hears your prayers according to this scripture. And so I just want to pray with you and pray for myself because, you know, none of us are perfect. We all sin at some point in our lives and we mess up and miss the mark and it's okay. It's, it's just that we need to get it right. Get back up, get in the right direction, get it right and change our ways for righteousness. And so, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before your throne of grace, Father God, and we thank you for this scripture and this word, Lord God. It is so convicting and it's helping us to see ourselves that we do need a Savior, Jesus Christ. And we thank you, God, that you sent him to die for our sin, Father God, and that you've forgiven our sin, Father God, and that we have been made saints as we have received Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And we just thank you for that grace gift that you have given to us, Father God. No condemnation to any of us, Father God. No condemnation. And we will not accept condemnation from the enemy that tries to place it on us, Father God. We turn from sin and we choose to walk in righteousness and holiness according to your word, Father God. And we choose to be in peace with all men, Father God and to walk in love with every person that we come into contact with. I thank you, Lord God, that we will be rooted and grounded in the spirit of love and let your light so shine through us with every person that we come into contact with, that the spirit of our minds will be renewed to righteousness and holiness, Father God, that we'll turn from anything that does not represent who you are in our lives, Father God, as we're an open book epistle to every person that we come into contact with, that we'll put off our form of conduct of sin and unrighteousness, Lord God, and we'll put on the new man of holiness, sanctification, and righteousness, Father God, and we'll walk in your ways so that we, we may please you, Father God, and that we will not walk in sin and unrighteousness, Father God. And we just thank you, Lord God. I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one of us, over our tongue and over our mind and our thoughts and our decisions and our actions, Lord God, that they'll be more reflective of who you are, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that we'll give up our ways and we'll accept your ways of righteousness, Father God. So we thank you that it is so. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Well, thank you so much for tuning in today. And I want you to make sure you remember this word and continue to walk in the path of righteousness. You be blessed and I will see you next week. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you found it helpful to you. Please share this video with others that you feel may benefit from the information that was shared. I do upload videos weekly, so make sure to subscribe and click the bell so that you'll get notification of each video. Also, if you need to email me for anything, please email me at tamikasnuggets at yahoo.com. Thank you.